Number six, Carlos de Luna. De Luna was convicted of murder and executed by the state of Texas for the February 4, 1983, killing of Wanda Lopez, a gas station attendant in Corpus Christi. Lopez died from multiple stab wounds, apparently from a buck knife. She was killed while on the phone with police, having just dialed 911 to report a suspicious person. According to the 911 tape, Lopez was handing her attacker money at the time she was stabbed, saying, You want it? I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'm not going to do nothing to you. Please. Despite the extremely bloody crime scene, no blood was ever found on De Luna. An investigation published by the Columbia Human Rights Law Review in May 2012 detailed a large amount of evidence suggesting the actual murderer was Carlos Hernandez. In addition to looking similar to De Luna, Hernandez was a career criminal living in the same neighborhood and had a history of assaulting women, robbing gas stations, and carrying knives. Hernandez allegedly told at least five people that he, not De Luna, was the murderer of Wanda Lopez. In a death row interview, De Luna told a local news reporter, I was standing there when somebody else did what they did, you know, but I don't want to name no names. In 2021, De Luna's case and claims of innocence were the subject of the documentary film The Phantom. De Luna was executed by lethal injection on December 7, 1989. Number 5. Troy Davis. On August 28, 1991, Troy Davis was convicted of the murder of police officer Mark McPhail in Savannah, Georgia. McPhail was working as a security guard at a Burger King restaurant. On August 19, 1989, he was killed while intervening in an assault on a homeless man, Larry Young, who was pistol-whipped by an unknown assailant in a nearby parking lot. McPhail was shot twice, once through the heart and once in the face. Bullets and shell casings from a 38 caliber pistol were retrieved from the scene. Sylvester Red Coles, who was seen arguing with Young earlier, told police that he saw Davis with a 38 caliber pistol and that Davis had assaulted Young. Coles neglected to say that he owned and was in possession of a 38 caliber pistol on the night of the shooting. Police searched Davis's home on August 20th, but did not find any evidence linking him to the crime. On August 23rd, 1989, Davis surrendered himself to the police. The murder weapon was never recovered, and Coles told police that he had lost his .38 caliber gun before it could be tested. Seven out of nine witnesses who testified against Davis during the trial later recanted their testimony, claiming coercion by the police. Evidence that Coles had confessed to the killing was excluded as hearsay because Coles was not subpoenaed by the defense to rebut it. Despite these doubts and lack of evidence, Davis was executed by lethal injection on September 21, 2011. Number 4. Daryl Renard Atkins on February 14, 1998, Atkins was sentenced to death for the robbery and murder of Eric Nesbitt. On August 16, 1996, Atkins and his accomplice, William Jones, were panhandling for beer money outside a convenience store. Atkin and Jones hijacked Nesbitt's truck at gunpoint as he was leaving the store parking lot. They stole $60 from Nesbitt's wallet and, after finding his bank card, abducted him to a drive through ATM where he was forced to withdraw $200. They then drove down a desolate road and shot Nesbitt eight times. Jones and Atkins were subsequently arrested. Jones testified against Atkins, who was convicted of capital murder. The Virginia Supreme Court affirmed the conviction, but reversed the sentence because of an improper sentencing verdict form. During the retrial, the defense presented Atkins' school records and the results of an IQ test carried out by forensic psychologist Dr. Evan Nelson. Atkins had an IQ of 59 and was mildly mentally retarded. In a landmark decision, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Atkins' case that executing the mentally retarded is cruel and unusual punishment. However, they left it up to the state to determine whether Atkins himself fit that category. In July 2005, a Virginia jury determined that Atkins was competent enough to be executed. 
The basis for the decision was that interaction with his lawyers provided intellectual stimulation and raised Atkins's IQ above 70. The prosecution argued that his poor school performance was caused by alcohol and drug use, and that his lower scores in earlier IQ tests were tainted. In January 2008, Circuit Court Judge Prentice Smiley commuted Atkins' sentence to life in prison. Number 3. Nathaniel Woods On March 5, 2020, ten minutes before Nathaniel Woods was scheduled to be executed, the chief of staff to the governor of Alabama received a phone call from the sister of one of the slain victims. Kimberly Chisholm Simmons, the sister of murdered police officer Harley Chisholm III, pleaded that they spare Woods' life. On June 17, 2004, in Birmingham, Alabama, four police officers, Harley Chisholm, Charles Bennett, Carlos Owen, and Michael Collins, stormed a crack house, while Woods and another man, Carrie Spencer, were inside. Spencer grabbed an SKS rifle when he heard the officers, while Woods was in the kitchen. After Woods surrendered to the officers, Spencer came downstairs and fired shots at all four police officers, killing three out of the four, Chisholm, Bennett, and Owen. Woods ran from the scene after the gunfire erupted. Michael Collins was injured, but survived. Spencer and Woods were both charged with the murders, despite Woods never firing a weapon. Spencer has said Woods was actually 100% innocent. That man didn't know I was going to shoot anybody just like I didn't know I was going to shoot anybody that day, period. Despite calls for his sentence to be commuted, the Supreme Court denied a temporary stay, and Alabama Governor Kay Ivey reviewed but did not intervene in the case. Woods's execution sparked further public outcry, with high-profile supporters and activists criticizing the justice system and calling the execution a mockery of justice. A petition to stop the execution garnered over 91,000 signatures. Number 2. Doyle Ham. Ham was convicted and sentenced to death in Alabama for the 1987 murder of Patrick Cunningham. While on death row, he developed terminal lymphatic cancer. This meant it was nearly impossible to achieve the venous access necessary to administer the drugs used in lethal injections. Despite a decades-long legal battle and months of warning by Ham's attorney and human rights observers, the Alabama Department of Corrections attempted to execute Ham on February 22, 2018. The unsuccessful attempt lasted nearly three hours and drew international attention. Ham was stabbed six times, with needles puncturing his bladder and penetrating his femoral artery. He became the fourth person in the United States since 1946 to walk out of the execution chamber still alive. In March 2018, Ham and the state of Alabama reached a confidential settlement, the terms of which precluded a second execution attempt, giving Ham a de facto sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Ham remained in prison until his death from cancer-related complications in 2021. Number 1. Richard Glossop On January 7, 1997, Justin Sneed beat Barry Van Trees to death with a baseball bat. The killing occurred at the Best Budget Inn in Oklahoma City, where Van Trees was the owner, Sneed was the maintenance man, and Glossop was the manager. In exchange for avoiding the death penalty, Sneed confessed and told police that Glossop had instructed him to commit the murder. Glossop refused to accept a plea bargain and insisted on his innocence. In July 1998, an Oklahoma jury sentenced Glossop to death. In 2001, the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals unanimously threw out that conviction, calling the case extremely weak and finding Glossop had received unconstitutionally ineffective assistance of counsel. In August 2004, a second Oklahoma jury convicted Glossop of the murder and sentenced him to death. Glossop complained that prosecutors had intimidated his defense attorney into resigning. In April 2007, the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals affirmed the death sentence. Glossop's last scheduled execution was on May 18, 2023. Glossop's attorneys filed for a stay, citing new evidence that shed doubt on the reliability of Sneed. Governor J. Kevin Stitt stated he would follow the parole board's lead. Ahead of the hearing, Kim Kardashian urged her millions of social media followers to contact the parole board and Stitt to stop the execution. 
On May 5th, the Supreme Court halted Glossop's execution. In July 2023, Oklahoma's Attorney General Gentner Drummond told the U.S. Supreme Court it should, at the very least, grant Glossop an evidentiary hearing due to alleged prosecutorial misconduct. Glossop, now 60 years old, remains in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in McAllister.